Hello everyone, I have spent the last 2 or 3 weeks making this 3D model for VTubing and VR chat for free. And here's how you can do it too by yourself. By the way, if you're thinking of getting a 3D model or trying out VTubing for the first time but don't know where to start, head over to my Ko-Fi page. Link is in the description. I make models like these once a month if possible, so if you're interested, head over to my Ko-Fi page. Again, link to my Ko-Fi is in the description. At the end of the video, I'm doing a giveaway of one of these models, so make sure to watch till the end. Let's get right into it. First of all, I had to design the model. The prompt that I came up with initially, or someone told me on Discord, I don't remember anymore, I forgot, was a froggy VTuber in a froggy hat. So I started off with drawing exactly that. When making a new design, I always start off with the body and face sketch, and then I just draw everything else on top of it and change things as I go. Since I had no particular theme in mind for Mochi, uh, outside of her being a froggy like I said, uh, I ended up taking way more time to lay out the design since I was not really inspired by anything when I began. But as I went on and scribbled more and more, uh, Mochi ended up having this naturally feeling, naturally feeling to her. Uh, so at some point I just decided to fully go with it and added uh, things like a cute watering can as well as opted for more muted uh, colors and I added a lot of green. The next step was editing the base. I already have a base made for chibis, for making chibis, uh, but I still adjusted it to the new proportions that I drew and I tried to rework the topology a bit. I ended up giving up though. Every time I make it, try to make it better again, it ends up looking more scuffed anyway, especially in the hips. So yeah, I don't recommend following my topology and what I'm doing here. If anyone knows how to fix these things, like making the hips bend prettily, please leave tips in the comments because I suck at it and it literally is like my third blender model ever, so I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Then it was time to model her. I love this part of model making so much. It's so satisfying to just see them become real. Real. <laughs> but anyway, I modeled everything that I drew for her as you can see. I usually like to mix the edit mode and sculpting mode to make the items and everything that I'm making just, you know, as good as I can. I also try to give the items and everything that I model as little polygons as possible to make sure to enable statistics in blender the reason why i do it is because the model having less polygons means that your pc will not explode when you're using the model <laughs> now but for real it want to make your computer lag so if you're trying to make a similar model try to make it with relatively little polygons or as little as possible also i should mention that making a 3d model usually i should make it off of a reference sheet so something like this for me though, since I'm making models on my own, uh, it's not necessary to draw more than just the front of the model. Since I know what the model is supposed to look like exactly anyway, all around. I also tend to retouch any areas that don't look, you know, the way that I want it to look like in 3D. So it's still okay without having all of the three angles drawn beforehand. Now though comes my least favorite part, which is marking the seams and the UV unwrap. I know what I just said probably doesn't sound like anything and just like a lot of gibberish. And honestly, the first time i learned what it is and how to do it I, it is a mess it was a mess i still honestly don't really know it <laughs> but it's not as hard as it seems i can still get by even though i don't understand it fully uh it's just i don't really like it but before i unwrapped anything uh i still made sure that i had the materials planned out correctly so i assigned the materials for mochi based on the color of the shading that I will use for those parts. So if it's uh, going to be something transparent, it has its own transparent material. If it's going to have outlines, it has a material that will have outlines. And overall, she ended up having 8 materials total. I literally learned doing seams off of a random YouTube video. And like I said, I still don't get it and grasp it fully. So if anyone wants to learn this or try to replicate this, just I do it in a few different spots and try it until it unwraps the way I want it to be. Also, again, I make as little materials as possible because the less materials that your character has, again, your computer will not explode when trying to, you know, process the model afterwards. Next up was texturing. So, uh, I simply just color pick what I drew beforehand, all of the same colors, and I colored it the way that I planned it, of course. There was one change though. I actually decided to change the art style for the iris. So I finally have a proper art style for the iris that I will continue doing. So expect an up updated blip mother sometime. Soon as where? Hmm? Maybe. <laughs> I took ages though. And I've been kind of just uh, testing, scribbling around, confused where to really go with this. But I finally made up my mind. So you'll probably see this type of eye coloring for the rest of my models. Or 
at least for some time <laughs> but I, I think i'll stick with it for a longer time because i i think it fits the nicest but anyway like i said uh coloring is pretty simple to do especially if you put all effort to uh, making the drawing the character first properly and you have all of the colors laid out properly so it should be easy to texture it afterwards it should be easy and then it was time to put some bones in her <laughs> Not much to mention here. The only thing that I watch out for every time that I make these, uh, I make sure that the bones are named in the correct format so that Blender can figure out how to symmetrize them correctly if I want them to be married, of course. Some people are also, and <laughs> we're also wondering and asking, how do I make, you know, jiggly ears and everything <laughs> like I have on my character and how I make the dresses look so they look very flowy. So just note that for ears, I make two bones. I put two bones for them. And for the uh, dresses, I put one singular bone like this around the whole thing. And that gives me usually the best results without, you know, doing too much work to make it look pretty. And now it was weight painting time. So I used to do an uh, auto rig that Blender has. You just click it and parent it with automatic weights or whatever. But for Mochi, I decided to do it just fully on my own. So I just parented it with zero weight with nothing. And did it my and painted it myself again here is how i would paint the dress or skirts or whatever else like this uh for anyone wondering so it all moves pretty and i gotta make sure that i use the hell out of the smoothing tool because then you're going to have you know pretty decent skirt physics in a simple way big important thing i do uh i always check each bone for movement because, you know, I'm a little bit speedy with this. <laughs> I've learned Blender in four months, don't, don't judge me. So sometimes I tend to overlook small areas or like miss small accessories that I, and I don't, you know, forget to rig it or don't give it any weight paint. <laughs> so if you do that, that part literally won't move at all and it's just gonna give you some weird tearing and glitches like this. So if you don't find those areas early, you're gonna have some weird issues later on. So keep that in mind. And finally, time to add key shapes. Yes, oh my god. <laughs> this is the fun part, I swear, every single time. I always add all the necessary key shapes, which is cute expressions, you know? I've made three whopping three versions of this <laughs> of this character. So the main uh, $120 version of her is just stacked with expressions. So enjoy me casually adding them all, them all in. I'm starting with expressions for VR chat, which are just mouth movement uh then adding all of the key shapes for the fancy ar kit tracking uh that you can do with your phone so it's fun stuff like being able to make your cheeks puff uh, puff up or taking your tongue out you know then i added a few key shapes that help uh, making expressions so like having the tears come forward uh or a blush come forward so anyone who gets this model can mix and match and make their own you know expressions with the stuff that i've made and after that i added the standard vrm expressions plus uh, eye and mouth movements for that but this is just for the cheaper versions of the model which don't have the air kit tracking uh, option and lastly i add all of the fun expressions that i came up with myself <laughs> so you can look you know make it look a little bit more expressive even if you don't have the fancy tracking and then finally, I was out of Blender and getting into the post-processing. So here's the part where I get to make all of the physics and set up the blend shapes. So yeah, basically finishing the model up. I can't forget to always set up the model as a humanoid rig and delete the jawbone because for some reason Unity loves to assume that my the, the hair that I make are a jaw. <laughs> then I quickly set up all of the materials and its shaders. If anyone's wondering, I'm using Mtune. I like to add outlines to everything but the face because this happens with the shader. It's not very pretty. I don't know if uh, there's a way to fix that. <laughs> I also changed the outlines to proper colors to match the textures for this model and then I added shading colors to make you know the model feel like it's full of color and I also added the physics so you can you know finally see how the end product will look like when it's moving around so the good stuff here and like I said even though you get to see the good stuff here uh, this is also the part where I always find the most issues with the models that i've made so far but after fixing things and importing everything here are the settings for the skirt physics so you know anyone wondering you want to have a pretty dress for themselves you can copy literally the values and as you can see i'm using the, the vrm spring bone so it's just the standard vrm model stuff 
Also, can't forget to add some colliders so that the legs literally don't clip right through the skirt. <laughs> and after like two days of bug fixing, I hated it. Uh, I got her to look pretty cute, yeah? Attention, I'm doing a giveaway. I'm choosing 10 lucky subscribers to get the full version of a model of your choice with air kit tracking and a VR chat package for free. So basically, I'm giving away $1,200 worth of models altogether. All you have to do is click subscribe within the next 10 days. So that's how Mochi looks like finished. If you haven't already, please make sure to click subscribe and the like button. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye!